The story of Pete Ridge is going to start in a little area just south of modern-day Garfield, Arkansas, at uh, the Little Sugar Creek. It's a small creek that really isn't, you know, have anything around it except for a lot of Confederate flags. But, you know, considering that it's Arkansas, eh, it kind of comes with the territory. But this is where the main Union camp was. It's along this river, or creek, right along here. So just to the north of the river is the actual town of Leetown. This is where uh, the main Union camp was. This is where the Union army was all set to face the Confederate forces uh, and expected them obviously to come over the creek and we'll keep calling it a river. Uh, the Union camp itself is nothing more than just, you know, now it's a parking lot, but it was a small camp by comparison just next to uh, Lee Town itself. Uh, which is just to the right of this picture. Uh, and Lee Town is mostly a forest today. Uh, nothing really special about this area. No pictures of the town actually exist. The Trail of Tears runs through it, which, you know, is sad. Uh, and the, the University of Arkansas was here to, to do some excavations. But most of the battle actually would end up behind the Union forces. So the battle, it actually starts by uh, a massive Confederate force moving behind the Union lines trying to link up, and a relatively small Union force literally stumbled into them. And instead of saying, hey, let's go back to Leetown, they attacked, and they were completely, you know, outnumbered. The Confederates were moving along um, Ford Road here, which you can see kind of up in the top, into Foster's Fields, and the, and the Union just unleashed on the Confederates. And predictably, the Confederates just stormed past everything. This was going to be another huge defeat. And things weren't going real well for the Union, and they were being sent back to this tree line here, and they found this woods here, Morgan's Woods, that the, the Union was just trying, these troops were just trying to get back and hopefully regroup to avoid another route that seemed to be happening all the time for Union troops around the country. So the Union forces are thrown back to Oberson's fields here. Uh, in the middle of the fields, they, they try to rally. They try to prevent this just total rout and have this Confederate force, which isn't even their whole army, just overrunning the Union. And uh, a particular colonel, Osterhaus, here with this glorious um, mustache, wow. Uh, he tries to rally the Union forces because he knows that this is going to be a total defeat. They are being pursued by the Confederates. This is Morgan's Woods, the southern view, and there was terrible fighting in here and the confederates were just pushing these cannons right there kind of mark where the the union kind of had to hold their line and i mean they are just firing into those woods and it seems pretty terrible uh smoke and ash everywhere screams uh, they had to hold the union had to stop because on the other side of the fence there in the back with those cannons that are completely overgrown that's lee town itself this is it so the Union could not have another defeat like Manassas or Bull Run, the, the opening battles of the war where this was going to end in a Confederate victory, Missouri was going to be a Confederate state, and boom, that was it. Uh, something had to change, and so Osterhaus was able to kind of rally um, and hold on. More artillery batteries were brought up and just unleashed. They had to stop the Confederates from attacking. They had to do something to stem... Uh, the tide. And I mean, it was really dicey for a long time and whether or not that was going to happen, but something changed the battle. At the height of the battle, just as the Confederates are about to completely overwhelm the Union, uh, something really unfortunate happens. The Confederate commanders, uh, General McCullough and his subordinate, General McIntosh, uh, somewhere in the middle of this field, the park doesn't mark it. Good call. Uh, they're leading from the front. They are leading their troops uh, on victory, and that kind of has a huge risk, and that's exactly what happened, because McCulley here gets axed. He's, get shot, he's shot through and dies on the battlefield, and then almost immediately after that, McIntosh here gets killed. And so within a span of two minutes, the entire Confederate attack collapses because their leaders are shot. So the battle then switches over to the main force, the actual main force of Confederates, that were coming up to an area called the Elkhorn Tavern. This is on the still behind the Union lines, and the Elkhorn Tavern itself is actually a uh, telegraph office. Uh, that's a recreation. Uh, the original one burned down about a year after the battle happened because you know 
that's what happens in war and wood is flammable. So this was their main supply line. So if this was cut, the Confederates knew that they, could, they, they would have the Union Army completely at the mercy. So what happens is the Union sent uh, Colonel Carr here uh, to pretty much shore up the defense. Hey, we got troops behind us. And this is all happening simultaneously over at, uh, just uh, north of Lee Town. So here the Elkhorn Tavern, they can hear the battle in the distance, and they have their own battle here with the actual main Confederate forces. And so they're scrambling, and they're getting ready uh, to face the onslaught of the Confederates coming at them. So this is Earl Van Dorn. He's the co overall Confederate commander and has excellent hair, if I might add. Uh, he was an able commander. Uh, and he was there to kind of make sure that the leadership of the Confederates in the West pretty much didn't fall to this fella right here. This is Sterling Price. He used to be the governor of Missouri, which is weird, uh, because he used to launch raids into Missouri for the Confederates. He was in charge of the Missouri State Guard, and between Van Dorn's Confederates and Price's State Guard, those two forces uh, came together to attack the Elkhorn Tavern, and they came around uh, the Elkhorn Mountains and just slammed straight into Carr's uh, Union forces, who were still scrambling. Again, this is all happening while the battle at Lee Town across the battlefield is happening. And so, but this is, this is just much larger, and this is where the main attack is, is occurring today. Van Dorn launches his attack. He doesn't have his full forces yet. That was, McCullough was actually on his way to join up with Van Dorn, and we're just going to sweep down the battlefield. But obviously, McCullough got himself, he tried to take a shortcut, ran into some Union, attacked them, got himself killed, and basically thousands of troops of the Confederates taken out. But even without those Confederate troops to help them out, you know, this was still going really well for the Confederates. They had surprised the Union, they were doing really well, this battle was, uh, was really intense, but the Confederates had, had the Union backing up to the Elkhorn Tavern, and as the ferocity continued, Van Dorn didn't realize that McCullough has been axed, McIntosh is axed, so he's still thinking that all those troops are going to reinforce him, so he keeps pushing it, and he forces the Union back to Forge Road, but this is just a little bit south. This is actually the same road that McCullough was supposed to link up with. They push him all the way back to this field, and the Union is pretty much forced to make their last stand here in Ruddock's Field. This is, those line of cannon are pretty much where the Union, uh, by the end of the evening, they had to stop, much like uh, on the other side of the battlefield. And by nightfall, the Missouri State Guard is charging, they are trying to break it, but the Union line just north of Leafield, just like in north of Leafield, they are able to hold. They're able to end the night, they have, the Confederates have taken the Elkhorn Tavern, and the Union line has stabilized. By the end of the, the, the day, McCullough's troops north of Leetown are pretty much gone because he's dead and they're just, the troops are just kind of sitting there. So the, uh, the Union is able to con concentrate all of their men and all of their guns. And so overnight, they move all of their cannons here to the base of the Elkhorn uh, Mountains. And in the distance there, that's where the Confederate forces were kind of digging in, waiting for the next day's battle. So this is where the big battle of the day was going to occur. And so in the early morning the next day, uh, those guns along the line there, that's all Union. The Union had about 24 guns just ready to hammer into that mountain um, that is at the base there. And boom, that is where they just open up on the base of this uh uh, of this mountain and so this is kind of what the confederates would have seen obviously there would have been a lot more cannons uh and just thousands of blue troops right there union troops and so more specifically this is actually their point of view within the base of the mountain and you got to understand there weren't any leaves although there were a lot of bees this day when i went and i'm sure there were bees back then too although it was march so who knows but anyway it must have been really really horrifying because You've got cannonballs being thrown into these trees, and splinters are going everywhere. It's loud. Um, by the way, these Confederate troops are actually from Missouri. These are part of the State Guard uh, under Price. And so they actually are so rattled that they kind of get dislodged. And it really demoralizes the Confederate forces for the huge attack coming up. The actual attack itself was pretty straightforward. Yes, that is my dad's finger there pointing. 
the way that the Union force uh, went through. They were overwhelmed. They overwhelmed the Confederates. The Confederates were now completely outnumbered with McCullough dead. Uh, by midday, this battle was over. I mean, it was it was just numerically speaking, the Confederates ran out of weapon uh, ammunition, and the Union were just walking all over. And that's kind of what the battle actually would have looked like. And so. It really was, uh, uh, you know, the the Confederates retreat, and that's kind of the end of the battle. And they say it's the battle that won Missouri, but it's not really in the way that you think. Um, both armies were intact. It's just that the Confederates got transferred somewhere else in the country because they needed troops, and pretty much the same thing for the Union. So it's not that Missouri was saved or anything like this. It's that all right, we're not really, it's not worth fighting over the state and we need these troops elsewhere. So that's pretty much how Missouri stays in Union hands because nobody really cares enough to actually fight for it. So, you know, yay.